What if you have 2 times u uh, times u minus 2v uh, plus v u minus 2v uh, plus third term actually u uh, minus 2v. Now, first, I want to show you something. I mean, I, you don't have to do this if, if you don't want to, but you need to be careful when you start writing a lots of U's and V's because you can get them very confused. So you notice how my U's have a nice tail, and my V's start with like a little curly thing here. And you can write your V's differently like this if you like. You just got to be really careful not to, not to be careless because a U can very simply and easily look like a V. All right? So we try to look for things common. This is three terms. We want to figure out what is common to all of these guys. Well, we immediately look for grouped things because we don't see anything in front that's going to be common. We see u minus 2v, u minus 2v, u minus 2v, and so we can obviously pull out a u minus 2v. All right? And then we look at the first term. If we pull it out from here, what we're going to have left is a 2u, right? And when we pull it out from this term, we're going to have a v left over, so it's a plus v. And then when we pull it out from this term, there's nothing else there, so it's just a plus 1. And if you want to verify this for yourself, then you can imagine this giant term being multiplied by this, giving you this, multiplied by this, giving you this, multiplied by this, giving you this. So that's the final answer. It's kind of a, a simpler introduction uh, in, in, into this. But basically, when you have giant group terms and you know across multiple, you can have four, five, or six of these large terms out here in the distance. You can factor them out just like uh, anything else in algebra. All right, now this next problem is a little bit more challenging. If you have, let's say, something like s squared plus 2 times p times s plus 2s minus 2s minus 4p plus 4. So the question is, factor by grouping. Well, you'll start looking at this. You see the s squared, the 2ps, and the 2s. You don't see any s squares. You don't see any 2ps's. You don't see anything common. So a lot of students just throw their hands up and say, well, I can't do anything. Remember, you are in charge of anything you already have learned in algebra in order to try to simplify this as much as possible to get it into a form that you can then factor it. So you may not know the final, uh, you may not see the final end game, but you look at this, for instance, and you see that there's an S here, an S here, and an S here. So forget about this term over here, but just this term, just pull out an S right here. So let's pull out an S because it's common. Maybe it will make it simpler. In the inside, we'll have an S plus 2P. Uh, plus 2. Make sure you understand that because all I've done is take 1s from here, 1s from here, and 1s from here, and this is what you have left over. All right. Now over here, what can you do? You look for something common that you can pull out. Well, you have an s, a p, and no variable, so you can't pull p or s out, but you notice you have a 2, a 4, and a 4. What can you pull out? Well, the minus sign stays there. You can pull out a 2. So if I pull out a 2 from this term, I'll have an s left over, and then it'll be minus um, 2p plus 2. Because if I pull out a 2 from here, I will have a 2 left over. If I pull out a 2 from here, I have a 2 left over. If you do the multiplication, you can see that all of these terms match. Like this. 2 times 2 gives you 4. Now what do you have? After I factored this first term and the second term, look at this. This term exactly matches this term. So this, even though it looks ugly and it's big, it's a common term. So I will pull out an S plus 2P plus 2. All right, when I pull it out from this first term, the only thing I will have left is an S. The minus sign will come along for the ride, and when I pull it out from this term, all I will have left is a 2, just like this. So I have S plus 2P plus 2 times S minus 2. This is where the factoring by grouping gets a little more challenging because when you look at this problem here, you can't see right away, even I can't see right away, what's going to happen. Like, I didn't really know, oh, if I just pull out an S here and if I just pull out a 2 here, then it's going to work. Like, I didn't know that. So when you're a student and you're solving this stuff, sometimes you have to just fool around with it a little bit. You try to factor out some things and factor out some things, and eventually you'll see, oh, wait a minute, that makes it where they match. Don't try to do the problem in your head ahead of time. You're going to have to work with it. A good example of that is this next problem. What if I have 3 times T minus 3 times S times T plus Rs minus 4. Oops, not minus 4. Rs minus uh, R. Rs minus R. Now, obviously, I've worked this problem before, so I, I have the answer right in front of me. 
and I'm teaching you, so I, I know. But the first time I did this problem, I promise you, I didn't look at this and say, oh, I know exactly what's going on. It's going to factor this and factor that. And it's going to work. Like even when you get really good at algebra, you don't see that stuff. You have to kind of play with it a little bit. So I start looking at this first thing, and I'm like, well, what can I do? I have a 3 here, and I have a 3 here. All right. And I have a T, and I have a T. All right. So they're both common. So I can factor out a 3T from the first term here. 3T. And then on the inside, all I'm going to have is 1 minus... Uh, S, right? Because when I factor from here, it's a 1. When I factor the 3t here, all I have left is the S, right? And then I look over here on the other side. What can I factor out of here? Well, I see an R that's common. And on the, S, on the inside, it'll be S minus 1. Make sure you understand that because I factor out an R. I have an S left. I factor out this R. It's just minus 1. So now I'm getting really closer because I have 1 minus S and I have S minus 1. Right, so they're really, really close. But remember that um, anytime you have subtraction like that, you know, you can always flip the order of that subtraction by factoring out a negative one. So let's just do that over here. Over here, we'll have three t, one minus s. Now I'll change this minus sign um, into. I'm sorry, I'll change this. Uh, well, you know, I'll keep it like this right now. Plus r. Now I'm going to factor out a minus one. That's going to change the s minus 1 to 1 minus s. Make sure you understand that because when you back multiply, the negative 1 times this gives me negative 1. Negative 1 times negative s gives me positive s. Make sure you understand that this is exactly the same as this. That's why it's not really a trick. It's just that by factoring on a negative 1, you're allowed to flip the order like this because you change the signs of everything inside. Okay? So then what we have, if I'm going to write it all out, is going to be 3 times t. 1 minus s, and then I have a minus sign that comes from right here, and then I have r, 1 minus s. Now, if I gave you this problem, you should be able to do factoring by grouping because you see the 1 minus s and the 1 minus s are common. So if uh, you factor out 1 minus s, that's what I'm factoring out, and then from the first term, when I factor that out, I'm left with 3t. The minus sign comes along for the ride, and when I factor 1 minus s from this term, I just have the r left over. And that's the answer. 1 minus s times 3t minus r. There is no way that most people, including me, can look at this first part here and realize that it's going to come down to this without doing the work. I didn't realize it until I noticed what was common. I pulled some stuff out. I noticed what was common here. I pulled some stuff out. Then I realized I could flip the order of this and make a match. And then I saw that I could do the factoring by grouping. If I give you this problem, of course you can do it. Uh, many times you have to do some initial work to get there, though. All right, we're going to do one more problem in this section. All right, 12x squared minus 8 times x times y minus 5 times 3 times x times z minus 2 times y times z. And I say factor by grouping. Or I just tell you factor it. I don't even tell you to do anything by grouping. Well, you're stumped at first because you have an x squared, you have xy. See, there is no xy anywhere here. There's z's in here. There's no z's here, so you're, you kind of throw your hands up. Well, you need to first look at the first term. What can I factor out of here? Well, I have a 12 and an 8. A common factor that I could pull out of both of these terms would be a 4 because 4 times 3 is 12 and 4 times 2 is 8. So I know I can pull a 4 out. I also have an x squared here and an x here, so I can pull one x out. I can't pull the y out because there's no y here at all. So what I end up able to do is I can pull out a 4x here. And on the inside, 4 times 3 gives me 12, so this becomes 3x. The minus stays, 4 times 2 is 8, and I have the y left over. So notice I pulled this x out. That's why there's no x present here. I pull one of these x's out, so I only have one x left. And of course, you can check it by distributing back in to make sure that this is right. Now, what I have here is a minus 5. What else um, can I pull out from here? Well, I look. I have a 3 and a 2. That's not helping me much. I have an x. There's no x here. I have a z here and a z here. I have a y here, but no y here. So really, the only thing common to both of those is a z. So I pull out a z like this, and so I pull out the z there, and what I'm left with is 3x on the inside minus 2y. Those are the only things that are left over uh, there. Now look what happens. I have a 3x minus 2y and a 3x minus 2y. This is the common term that I'm now then going to factor out by grouping, making it 3x minus 2y. And then what do I have left? When I factor it out of this term, I'm left with 4x. 
and when I factor it out of this term, I'm left with 5z. Notice I have a minus sign, so it's minus 5z. And there you go, that's the final answer. 3x minus 2y times 4x minus 5z. Again, nobody, I shouldn't say nobody, I'm sure there are geniuses out there, but definitely not me. I couldn't look at this and this and say, oh yeah, it's going to turn out to be this, I'm going to factor. I couldn't figure that out by looking at it. You're going to have to do some manipulation and do the problems one step at a time. This is the point in algebra where you start not really being able to see the answer too easily until you start doing some work. And most problems from here on out are going to be like that. So make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next section. We'll get a little more practice with this concept uh, and you'll get some, some, some solidification of your skills along the way. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.